G'day everyone, thanks for tuning in. It is freezing cold here this morning and my hands are so cold I can hardly move them. So I'm just waiting for the sun to come up a little bit higher so I can warm up enough to start work today. Actually, that's only partially true. I'm kind of procrastinating because today's job involves cutting a hole in the side of the bus, which always makes me very nervous. The job that I'm going to be starting today is to install the shore power inlet in the side of the bus. So that's this thing here. It's where you plug in if you're at a paid um, campsite with power hookup. This is where you plug in to connect the bus to the shore power. So that's going in the side of the bus. I need to cut a hole in the side of the bus and put this in. So I'm at the back of the bus on the passenger side. This here is the door to the fuel tank and somewhere around here is where I want to put the power inlet. So I'm just going to go inside the bus and show you what it looks like from in there um, and then I'll be able to work out sort of roughly where it's going. All right, so I'm at the very back of the bus here. You can see that's the rear door I've got open and this area here is what I was building to um, have my washing machine and drying racks and things in here. So this is like the laundry area at the back of the bus. And as you can see, I've taken off the wall cladding and the insulation from this area. So you can see the inside of the wall. And somewhere in here is where I'm going to be wanting to install this outlet. So it will come through the wall here and the cable will plug into the end here. Now, there was no template or anything that came with this to show you what size hole to cut, but it does have this, which is just like an adhesive foam kind of gasket. So, you know, I would peel this layer off that would get stuck to the outside wall of the bus and then this would um, go through it. So this is actually, I think, the hole that I would need to cut um, because it's going to go on the bus like that. So I'm going to try using this as my template to mark the hole and also um, to mark where I need to drill the pilot holes for the screws. So you know I'm thinking if I put it here somewhere there's a nice flat section I won't have to cut through any of this um, and if I just put it up a little bit higher that should give me enough room uh, when this comes through um, for the the cable and the plug and everything um, to be you know to be able to get around this somewhere about there uh, is what I'm thinking now because it's a bit tricky to measure like from the corner here to get the exact position on the outside of the bus what I'm gonna do is just drill a tiny little pilot hole at the top of this um, hole here through to the outside and then I can go around to the outside of the bus and line this up and that'll just give me a sense of where the hole is going to be and where the socket's going to be on the outside just to make sure that the position is okay. So I'm going to go and do that first and if I'm happy with the position then I'll be able to go ahead and mark the hole on the outside. see daylight <laughs> so let's go to the outside of the bus and see where it is okay well there's my hole so I've lined up my template with the little hole that I drilled from the inside and so now you can see where it's going to go on the bus I think ideally I would like it to be a little bit higher just so I'm not having to bend down as much to plug it in but you can see from inside if I go up any higher I need to cut through a lot more metal on the inside so I don't really want to do that it'll be much easier to cut through this single layer of flat metal so I'm happy to put it there and there's plenty of room between the fuel door and this if at any stage in the future I want to install an awning on the bus, I'm not planning to at the moment, but if I decide that that is something I want to do down the track, then there's plenty of room there for the arm of the awning to attach to the bus and not be in the way of this. So I'm pretty happy with where that is. What I'm going to do now is draw around this hole here that I need to cut, 
mask it all up with masking tape and then I need to get my jigsaw out and actually cut the hole. I decided to make another template out of thick cardboard because that foam rubber one was just way too flexible and was too hard to get lined up and keep it nice and straight. So I've cut a template out of cardboard instead and I'm going to use that to mark the hole on the bus. So that's the hole. Uh, it's still not quite big enough, it's just a little bit tight, but because it's so hard to control the jigsaw, like it wants to kind of jump around quite a bit, I'm going to try just filing the edges where it needs to be just a little bit bigger and see if that's enough because I'll be able to control that a lot more than the jigsaw and I don't want to risk like, you know, flying out and making the hole too big. So I'm just going to try filing these edges down just to see if I can make the hole a fraction bigger to get the plug to fit in. that's as straight as I'm going to be able to get it. It's not too bad. I think I'm just going to go with that. So what I'm going to do now is just file the edges so that they're smooth. I'll get this masking tape out of the way and I'll paint the edges of this with some Panatrol just to help prevent rust from forming there on that cut edge. It's really important when you're cutting any of the metal in the bus to make sure you get rid of all the little tiny metal shavings that are left behind because these can easily cause rust. And you can see I used a towel underneath where I was cutting to help prevent the shavings from going further down into the frame where I wouldn't be able to reach them. Penetrol alone probably would have been sufficient to protect the cut edges of the metal here, but once it was dry, I also sprayed the area with some Rust Guard primer. All right, and I've just cut this piece of timber here. It's 30 mil thick, and I'm gonna put this, I'm just gonna glue that into position there. And the idea of this is that it just gives the screws a little bit more meat to screw into when I screw the actual inlet in from the other side. So I'm just going to put some sicker on this, do my best to clamp it and leave it overnight and hopefully that will be enough to stick this on there. Alright, so I've got that sickered on there. Hopefully those clamps will be enough to hold it. I'm going to leave that overnight and just see how it goes. This sicker was a couple of years old. It's a new tube, but it's a couple of years old, so it may not be any good. Supposedly only has a shelf life of 12 months, which is really annoying. But because it hasn't been opened, I'm just going to give it a go and see what it's like. It's squeezed a little bit out, so I'll probably have to clean up a bit of that sicker once it's dry in the morning, but that shouldn't be too hard. Anyway, just leave that overnight now and uh, hopefully come back tomorrow and it will be firmly stuck on there. 
All right, well, it's not supposed to rain tonight, but we will get a bit of condensation. So I've just taped a plastic Ziploc bag over this just to help to try and keep it um, dry overnight. And if we do get a little bit of rain or something, hopefully it won't get in there. All right, well, it's another day. It is time to finish installing the shore power inlet. I've just taken the clamps off this and it seems to be really well stuck to the wall. So even though the sicker was really old, I think it's doing the job. Made a bit of a mess with the sicker on the outside though, which is annoying. Hopefully I can just clean that up with a bit of terps or something. So I'm just gonna cut away this excess sicker, the inside of the hole here, give this a bit of a clean, and then I'll be able to screw on the inlet. So I'm just going to use some of this uh, wax and grease remover just to give it a good clean to um, help that adhesive foam piece to stick a bit better. Well, there it is it's not totally straight uh, but there's not much I can do about it now it's screwed in there <laughs> it's, it doesn't look too bad it's only slightly out so I think I can live with that I'm not convinced this is going to be watertight um, ideally I would like to run a bead of sicker all the way around this but I don't know if you're going to be able to see this here it's a bit awkward the foam gasket is kind of providing some level of protection there but I can't actually put any sealant along the top there because of the design of this thing like that's the hinge and if I put sealant along there I'm not going to be able to open and close this door so it's a bit annoying um, because you know I think water's going to be able to get down inside there but anyway I'll just see how it goes um, I may end up having to put a different sort of gasket around underneath it that sticks out a bit more that I can seal around because I think the one that's provided with the inlet is actually pretty crappy to be honest but anyway that's supposedly weatherproof the way it is so we shall see and this is what it looks like on the inside. I've painted this piece of timber with some anti-mold primer. Probably should have done that before I sickered it on there because then I could have painted the other side as well. But anyway, I only just thought of it and the <laughs> sicker is well and truly stuck. So it's not coming off. Um, anyway, hopefully that will help a little bit. I guess if it does leak, I could maybe put some sealant on the inside there, but it's going to be a bit awkward. Anyway, I'll worry about that. Uh, if I get leaks what I'm going to do about that but anyway hopefully that will be fine um, there's plenty of room there for the cable to plug in and it will go down here under the floor to my electrical bay um, yeah I'm pretty happy with that 